Here we're going to tie a streamer called the Zuddler. This fly is a mix between a muddler and a zonker, hence the, the name Zuddler. First thing we went ahead and did was added a large cone, and then we put some 020 or 025 lead wire on the shank of the hook. This added some weight and uh, also helped center the cone and keep it from rattling around on the shank of the hook. All I'm doing now is just wrapping through this wire a few times here. This will make sure it's secure, keep it from twisting. And as I'm doing that, I'm building up a little bit of a transition here from my wire to the shank of the hook with my thread. Once you've done that, you're going to take your thread all the way to the rear of the hook. Then you're going to cut off about a two and a half inch piece of uh, zonkered rabbit strip. And we're going to tie in the rabbit strip with the, the tail, or the back of the rabbit strip, hanging off the back of the fly by, oh, about a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch, depending on the size you're tying. Then I simply just wet my fingers and pull that rabbit strip, a few of those rabbit strip fibers forward, right at that one quarter or one inch or half inch mark. I'm going to make a nice loose wrap with my thread here over that rabbit strip hide. Then I'll bite down with it nice and tight. Once I've got two or three nice tight wraps, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wrap about a half a dozen or so wraps in front of it, making sure that uh, it's nice and tight and secure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a a dubbing loop for our body material, which is going to be some pearl UV ice dub. And I take my thread forward. And we're just going to take some of that ice dubbing here and we're going to put it inside of our dubbing loop. I'm going to spread it out as evenly as we can throughout the, the dubbing loop. And we're going to spin it up. And we can take it off our tool here. Now all I'm going to do is pull all this rabbit back out of the way. Take that dubbing loop here and just wrap it forward. And the reason I use a dubbing loop is just because ice dubbing is very slippery stuff. And when I'm adding a lot to the shank of the hook like this, it uh, is much easier to do with the dubbing loop than it is to dub it all by hand. And I'm going to take it almost all the way forward. I'm going to stop just short here. Leave a little bit of room up by the head. Then the next thing to do is to pull that rabbit strip forward. You can kind of wet your fingers a little bit here to help it all lay, lay back. And I want it centered right in the middle or right in the center of the, the shank of the hook. I don't want it lopsided to either side. I want it right down the middle. Then I can trim out the the extra rabbit. Now we're ready for the the gills or the kind of the bloody throat of the fly and for that you can use two different materials if you like. You can use either crystal flash in red or you can use the flashaboo in red. I'm going to use a little bit of flashaboo here. Either one though is uh, perfectly fine. They both will do the same thing in the end. You're going to take a fairly generous clump of this. I'd say probably about 20 or so strands. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie this in right on the underside of the, the hook.
making sure it's centered right on the underside. Then what we can do is we can trim it nice and short. We just want a hint of hint of gills here. So I'm going to trim them only about a quarter of an inch or so. Just like so. That way the fish can just see that hint of blood. Now the next thing to do is to tie in the legs. For this I'm going to use some brown medium round rubber legs. We're going to put two on each side. So I just tie in two on one side and then we'll do two on the other. You can use whatever color legs you want here. You can use red, you can use yellow, you can use orange. You can do whatever you want. A lot of the Zuddler patterns though use brown or black. But this fly can be tied in a lot of different colors. This is more of the natural color here. And for now we're just going to leave those legs hanging off the back. Leave them long just to kind of keep them out of the way. Now the next thing to do is we're going to spin our, our collar and we're going to tie the tips of the collar in first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some deer hair here and I'm going to put it inside a hair stacker. And I'm going to stack it so the tips are even. Once I've got the tips mostly even here, I can take it out of our stacker. And we want the tips of our fur to only stick back, oh, maybe halfway or less to the back of the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my deer hair to about that length, or at least close to it. And I'm going to tie this deer hair in right here at the head of the the hook and I'm going to let it spin around the hook here. I'm going to do one side at a time so I got half of the side here done. You can see I still have my side to go so all I'm going to do is simply repeat the, the process. <clears throat> Stick some hair in my hair stacker. Kind of measure it out here. And we can trim out some of the the butt ends here. Kind of get them out of your way. And once you've done this, we're ready to spin the head onto this fly. First, we'll kind of clean it up with a little bit of thread. Basically lay a nice smooth base down here for our spun deer hair head to lay onto. And at this point, if you want, you can trim those legs. We'll trim those legs to just about the length of the, the tail. And for the the head of this fly, we're going to take a nice generous clump of deer hair. I'd say about one and a half times the diameter of a pencil. 
and we're going to trim the tips of this deer hair off just leaving the middle portion and we're going to tie this in we're going to have about an inch and a half or so of deer hair we're going to tie this in right in the middle of it a nice loose wrap and we're going to gradually tighten down and we'll do each side basically like we did the the collar of the fly really let it flare out and then what we can do is pull the deer hair back and we're going to whip finish right behind the the cone here trying to pull the deer hair back at the same time we're whip finishing Trim out your thread. Now we can trim this deer hair. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it flush to our cone. Just trim little by little here. Careful to not trim any of the materials that we've tied in before, so we have to be careful here to not get any of the, the tips of the deer hair. So I just trim it little by little with the tips of my scissors. There we go. Just leave a little bit of your your deer hair collar and usually what I'll do is I'll trip, trim almost all the deer hair out of the underbelly here, even the tips to expose the the gills. Once you've got the deer hair collar all finished, you basically have a, a finished Zuddler. It's a very effective streamer for trout and bass. Imitates kind of a sculpin or a bait fish fly. And you can get all the materials for this fly at intheriffle.com.